morning we are delighted to have today a very important person. Uh, I think he's Dr. Gerda Nicholas. Uh, good morning, uh, Mrs. Nicholas. Good morning, good morning, how are you? Uh, I understand you are in Miami, aren't you? I am in Miami, I must tell you that I'm enjoying the sunshine and the heat right about now. Okay, but you were born in another country. What country were you born in? I was born and raised in Haiti. I was born and raised in Haiti, originally from uh, Gangwa, Tigua area. Right. Did, uh, and when did you leave Haiti? I came to the U.S. Um, in my teens. I came here when I was in the 15 years old and immigrated to Brooklyn. You know, so I call Brooklyn home in the United States. When, no matter where I reside, I always tell people that I'm from Brooklyn in the United States. So you went to school in Brooklyn and then... I did. I, I did. I, I did. I finished the last couple of years of my... Um, of my education, my last two years in of high school in Brooklyn, and then I went to um, Rutgers University, where I did my undergraduate for Which my. Um, university is that? Rutgers, Rutgers University. Rutgers. Mm-hmm. In New Jersey. In New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, I, I did my undergraduate there. Undergraduate. I went to, uh huh. And then I went, to went into university. I did, I went to, I went to, so Rutgers College, Rutgers University is the undergraduate, where I went for my undergraduate education. But, um, and then you obtained my doctorate? And then I went to my, for my master's at Fairleigh Dickinson University, and then I went to Boston University for my doctorate in clinical psychology. Your doctorate in what, what field, what area? Clinical psychology. Clinical psychology. Mm -hmm, and yes. And now a, you are... After your graduation, you became a university teacher. Is that what it is? Exactly. I'm a professor. I'm a university professor. I've been a professor now for the last 24 years. 24 years? Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my yes. God. And you have so, enjoyed your profession, right? Then? I love being a professor. I love it. It's, it's everything I, I, I wanted to do, which is about preparing the next generation. You know, um, and there's no better calling than that than very, to. Very good. Now, mm -hmm. besides teaching, being a professor at the university in clinical psychology, you are also involved in the community. I understand. Uh, yes. Absolutely. You know what I do? I'm a community psychologist by training. So, by virtue of that, it means everything that I do is related to community-based work. So, as a as a part of that, you know, I, I, I'm sure maybe uh, some of you may know that I started out my career as a professor at, at uh, Teachers College, and then I went to Boston. I was a, a professor at Boston College for many years, and I've been at University of Miami for you know for almost ten years now. And my reasoning for coming to University of Miami was the opportunity to really create a number of community-based types of academic programs. So we created an undergraduate major, a master's program on community and social change, and then we have a doctoral program in community well-being. And yeah, so all I that- founded all these programs. Huh? Along with some of my colleagues, right, um, at the university. And so I say all of that to say then the, the work that I do both here in the States and in, in IT, is all community based. It's all in partnership and collaboration with communities. So what and so I, problem do you encounter in Miami, mostly with the Haitian community, but with all the communities I presume? Yeah, absolutely. You know, one, of, one of the things here in, in, in Miami, Miami is a really wonderful place to be because I think it represents a good mosaic of what the country will look like. It's a very multicultural, multilingual community. And at the same time, it's also a very transient community. So you, you may be working with a particular community organization um, and their leaders, and they may move to another sector, or the participants may move to another place within Miami. So it forces us to always be thinking about the larger community as opposed to just solely maybe one area within the community. And that's really helpful in, um, in doing some of the work that we are doing. So that's one. And I think the other piece is just, um, you know, making sure that uh, we, we're shifting the narratives about who we are as Haitian people, right? And, and how do we promote the various Haitian professional organizations that we do have here in Miami 
who are a central part of the larger community. So, for example, we have a large Haitian Nurses Association, we have Haitian Law, we have Haitian Business, we have the Haitian Educators, we have, um, you know, we have Haitian um, Architects. So this is a really great opportunity for us to come together as a unit and think about ways that we can uh, promote the Haitian community here in Miami, as well as, as really connecting some of the work that we're doing in, in IT as well. Good. Now, what sort of programs therefore you have? You meet all these professionals, you talk together, and then you, you have a, a program for the population. Okay? What specifically do you try to perform with them? Well, so we, we definitely have a coalition. So there's a coalition called the Miami Philanthropic Coalition that's made up of all of these various professional organizations, which are important because it provides a space for people to come together and think about the kind of work we need to do collaboratively um, together. Um, in addition to that, we have a number of um, so each of these organizations have programs that they are implementing in the larger community. Our work specifically out of my group, is, is really three folds. One is we have a, a parent caregiver program called the Strong Roots Program that we've been implemented, implementing for the last eight years here in Miami. We also have a, a youth identity program, which is about building the identity and self-esteem of Haitian kids and black kids in general here in Miami. Um, and then lastly, we really, um, for the last, I would say, um, eight years have really been working on developing a very, a, a really the importance of creating an endowed fund for IT. And so we've been really working with um, and researching a group of colleagues and I, and, and, and I'm so excited to say that we've been able to create the very first foundation in Haiti called the Haiti Community Trust in partnership with the Miami Foundation. Um, but in the foundation is registered in Haiti, um, and, and we'll do grant making um, for, um, in two organizations in Haiti who are doing work in focusing on the environment. Uh, something for the future, or did you already begun working with a clinic in Haiti? No, so the, so think of the, the foundation is not a clinic. The foundation is like any other foundation. It's like the Kellogg Foundation. Um, this is a community foundation, the IT Community Trust, a community foundation that will do grant making in three areas, and that is the environment, entrepreneurship, and civic education. That is and, very, very important. Very yeah. Important. So we're very excited about it because it means that we are creating something that will be there beyond myself, right? That's what the endowment means, means we are raising the funds to build an endowment, and then we will be spending the yield and the interest of that endowment. So the funds that we raise, which will be invested by the Miami Foundation here in Miami, is always going to be there in perpetuity, which is really important. You know, for that's very exciting what you're telling me, because I think that the, the diaspora, the Haitian diaspora, should have a greater impact on the conditions of Haiti. And that is absolutely marvelous. You are very, very, I feel very, very proud of you and of your outreach to the other associations so that combining your efforts, you may be more uh, powerful in your impact on Haiti. Are you very hopeful that this will be? I, I am beyond hopeful. I mean, uh, oh, it and see me, you will see the excitement. Um, yeah. Both me, you it in my voice, and you'll see the excitement because we we have managed to put together an amazing group of Haitian Americans, folks from Haiti, as well as friends of Haiti. On the invite your audience and guests to go and take a look at the website itcommunitytrust.org, and they'll see the team of people who are doing that work. We we are all heading to Haiti next week, next Thursday. The board will have its meeting. In Haiti, um, we have a, a number of activities being planned um, there because part of, uh, of the work is about not only leveraging the resources of the Haitians in the diaspora, but also the resources of Haitians in Haiti, Absolutely. right? To, to, Absolutely. To, they have to wake up because exactly. the present condition of Haiti is unbearable and inacceptable. Exactly. 
So we have to change things and Absolutely. the impact on the professional in Haiti too and in the government of Haiti so that they will be more efficient in serving the population. So really, I thank you so very much. That is absolutely wonderful. You know, on our side here, we mm -hmm. have a kind of a, a kind of a grieving over the fact that the Haitians have a very bad press and a reputation in the United States, as if we're a bunch of people begging for survival and not helping the community. And mm -hmm. to create, uh, to write a book and also to have a documentary precisely uh, highlighting all these efforts because you are not the only one, there are many really? who are professors, who are doctors, who are professionals, who are engineers, or lawyers, and yeah. of course the tremendous service also of those who work in, in the farming industry providing food other population, you know, you need all sorts of services, and the taxi drivers, and the people who work as nurses, or who work uh, at hotels, you know, because in the hotels you need to wash the, the bed sheets, you need to clean the rooms, and all of this requires human efforts that must be respected, and that contribute to the greatness of this nation. And Absolutely. So we want, uh, will you be uh, participating in that effort to make a professional documentary that will kind of show to the American public and to the Haitian public the important contribution that the Haitian immigrants have brought to the culture and to the economy of the United States. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm, I'm so, I was so excited to hear about this initiative that all of you are taking on, it, which is about shifting the lens and shifting the narrative of what is it that people know about both IT as a country as well as the people who, who, who are birthed or comes out of that out of that of that country. It is absolutely crucial for us um, as Haitians to make sure that we tell the story that we want people to hear about us. Right, and if we are not the storyteller, somebody else will be the storyteller for us. And this is an opportunity to for all of us to come together and demonstrate, not to the world, but more importantly to ourselves and to our, the generations of young people that are coming after us, so that we, we can give them something to be very proud of. To be Haitian is is to be absolutely proud of, and and we don't want to take the energy and time to respond to leaders who sees the country in a particular way or feel the need to, to call us names and so forth because our effort and our focus should be how do we build how do we build our own narrative and we allow people the chance to see what we made up of and who we are. So I'm excited to take part of that because the IET Community Trust is about that. It's about Haitians coming together and doing something good for the country. I'm and this positive. It, yes, I'm positive it, that you will be able, if you join absolutely. our efforts, you know, unity is, well, you know, as a priest and a bishop, I believe in love and unity. You absolutely. You discover God or Jesus Christ without understanding that we worship God through, uh, of course, in prayer, but also through service of love and of dedication. We have to take care of Haiti, our land, which has suffered throughout history uh, because even our slow development, when you study history, you discover that for so 80 years after our independence, we gave 5 million francs in those days to France. So every mm -hmm. really penny that we were making through our economy were going to France to keep them away because they wanted to go and reconquer our land. And the people were so passionate about their freedom that they really preferred to pay this indemnity to France. But this prevented us to really invest in the development of the country. Of course, this happened for until 1915 
from 1820 to 25 to 1915, we have given all our money to a foreign land. This has been a, a, a very uh, important factor that has kept us in poverty. Yeah. Absolutely, and I also think it's, you know, as you, as you mentioned, um, Bishop, it, it is important for people to recognize that in the midst of all of that, and, and let's not also forget the, the U.S. occupation that took, also took place in Haiti for a significant period of time. Many U.S. occupations as well. But in the midst of all of that, Haiti was always a, uh, servicing the world. So if you look at the role that Haitians played in helping free a number of countries in, in our world, Latin America. Colombia. Yes, and so e despite our uh, economic challenges, the, this idea about s servicing and recognizing that we have a role to play in terms of larger humanity has been a central aspect of what it means to be Haitian, right? And um, and I do think it is it is an important part that needs to be told, and hopefully will be an integral yeah. part of this book project. And we participated, Haitian participated also in the War of Independence of the United States, not only uh, in, in Savannah, Georgia, but also yeah. in Louisiana. Yes. And of course, it's a Haitian who founded the city of Chicago. Chicago, exactly. Uh, exactly. So and that's a, but we still and have uh, many challenges, don't we? We still have many challenges. And what do you see as our challenges? Absolutely. I think that, you know, we do have a, a lot of challenges. And, and some of those challenges are things that we ourselves need to work on. And then there are challenges that are external challenges um, that we need, to, we need to tackle. All of which means that we must have a comprehensive approach to any particular issues, right? So the, 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 thing, the things that are occurring in the country cannot be solved by one approach, right? So we need to really think about the multiple ways that we can um, uh, address some of those issues in a way that will lead to some level, to a level of sustainability and development in the country, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So we... Yeah help on you and all your contacts to assist us here with our naked hands. We want to make a documentary, so we will need everybody. It's not we who are going to write it, or all the groups are going to write it. We're simply going to be the chapeau of the head over uh, the body, uh, to bringing together what everybody produces so that we can have a very powerful documentary that will surprise the American public and even the Haitian public, but, mm -hmm. but not with bitterness, not with uh, any sense of uh, anger. We want simply to show what we have done and what we are doing and that what we intend to do further. And I think that will really help even the Haitians to have a better self-image. You mentioned at the beginning that one of your clinical efforts is to build up the self-image of black kids, of Haitian kids, possibly of Hispanic kids too. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. Of course, one of uh, the factors in a way that really uh, prevents us from doing better is that we have a portion of our population is still undocumented and, you know, this is a, a, a choking factor. And if you mm -hmm. uh, have possibilities to provide documentation to those who are here by necessity, who cannot go back, have nowhere else to go, and who have already a good experience of the United States, if those could be the help to acquire uh, at least residency and eventually citizenship in this country, they would be much more successful in solving problems. Absolutely, a absolutely, and I and I do think that this is exactly what I mean, Bishop. Is that we we really have to think about this the the multiple multiple ways of sort of addressing that. So if you take that 
issue as an example, the issue about TPS as an example. There are some things that we need to do here in this country to ensure that the people who come on this shore are able to have a prosperous, prosperous life, just like any other immigrants have come to this country able to do. And at the same time, we have to think about what are some of the mechanisms that we are putting in place in the country that enable people to see staying in the country and being at home is as viable as 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 living as well, right? And it's and really for the progress of the United States instead of keeping a, for a population, I would say, locked into uh, 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 into conditions that prevent them from from, from flourishing exactly and from being fruitful, more fruitful in this land. Of course, yeah. I understand that you cannot open the gate and allow a million people to come all the time, but there can be procedures to control uh, the, the population, but at the same time, those who have been here for so many years, and this has been done in the past many, many years, I don't know if it is only, I hope it's not by reason of prejudice, I hope it is not, uh, I suspect that prejudice is also is also present in that uh, in, in that policies that are being promoted at the moment. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, and I and I do think that as I as I indicated that it is absolutely important that we do both. I think it's important that we do the work that we need to do here, and it is our sincere hope that through the foundation, the IT Community Trust Foundation, that we're also looking about. How are we building a sense of development to these pillars of focusing on entrepreneurship and environment and civic education? Because that is about building livelihoods in the country and making and providing access to resources to individuals in the country so that we actually reduce the level of brain drain that we need we, we have. So it it is time, you know. I said to all my, my friends, Ali. So in you conclusion, know, we really want to thank you for your remarks. Uh, for opening our eyes on the activities being conducted in Miami uh, for the larger country, and it's including the Haitians, and your dream for really uplifting the conditions in Haiti as well. And you are a real sister, and we proclaim you and all your efforts and all those who work with you. And we look forward to your collaboration in the effort that we are making all over the country for the new documentary on the Haitian population, on the work and on the efforts and on the success in many ways of the Haitian community in the United States. Well, I, I certainly want to say thank you so much and uh, you, you know, for inviting me to be a part of the conversation today, for inviting me to be a part of the larger project. You know, our, our motto in Haiti, as you know, is L'Union fait la force. And so we know very well that the very best way that we will succeed is if, in fact, we come together as a collective. So and God so bless you and all your efforts and all your companions. May he bless, bless everything that you undertake and may the Lord bless also all those who are listening to this program. May we be one, one in the service of those who are in need. This is the message of the gospel. Remember Jesus said at the end of time he will appear and he will say to the righteous, I was hungry and you fed me. I was naked and you gave me clothes. I was a foreigner, and you welcomed me. And the people will say, Lord, it never happened, we never met you. And Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of your brethren, you do it for me. And he will tell the others, go away, because I was hungry, you didn't feed me. The people said, no, if we had seen you, we, we would have fed you. Whatever you, you refuse to the least in your midst, you refuse it to me. So the law of charity is the mandatum, the commitment of the law. So it's good to hear 
that we belong to, to the righteous people. We care, care for everybody without hatred, without any spirit of revenge, of resentment. We care for everybody, including the needy. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.